exactly can a broken shoes do now? Seemingly small things create large shock waves. Big things and events are only the result of the accumulation of multiple small waves that go adding up together. As long as they have the same frequency, definition of harmonics of a frequency, no action is too small. That is a limited concept pertaining to 3D programming. Anything they can do, whatever, no matter how small the action is, it is adding up. It also defines who they are, defines their souls. What to do will depend on each person, and they must take responsibility for the decision of what to do and how much to do. An example, a man who defines himself as rude, but who cannot at that moment help being this way, may decide to go without a mask and confront the people who demand that he wears it. Because he can do that, it's in him. But another person, let's say a doctor, who writes and writes documents that are later published, and she knows that she helps a lot this way, but she can't handle the confrontation, she doesn't like it, she doesn't handle it well. She can allow herself to wear a mask to enter a store without being confronted. Each one must decide what they can and cannot do, and forgive themselves for what they can't. No one can save the earth, nor the society, with the exception of broken shoes. There will be no help from galactic federations, or from white hats or olive green hats. Broken shoes will have to do the job. One does not drown by falling into the river, but by staying in it, ancient saying from India. Broken shoes is everything, the key. Everything that happens is happening simultaneously in what you would call other timelines, but they are not timelines anymore. That would only be from a point of view relative to a person, or from the point of view of the group, but it dissolves, really. The timeline is not as they say there it is, as if they were alternate railroad tracks. Rather, everything is a single unit, and again, it depends on a person what they see of that unit, as with reality, as already described, but applied to what they call timelines or chain of events, one after another. But that is the problem too. It is not one event after another. It only looks like this from there, from the earth, from the perspective of the people or of each person or of the collective. Instead, the past, present and future are a single mass interfering with each other constantly as the very nature of reality. Much more to say here, but applied to what happens or will happen, I could say that what I see is that I see everything although it is not possible to see everything from a position that is not from the source itself. But I see everything rhetorically or metaphorically, and that causes me not to see anything in particular, because everything that can happen will still happen. It happens, and it already happened. Everything interconnected. More than ever, I see that everything is manufactured by the very people 
as I have already said. Everything is the work of broken shoes. As a single person or as a group of broken shoes, everything else just emanates from their mind. And broken shoes does not want to get out of what he or she is creating. She has total free will to do what she wants, yet she is a slave of what she wants. She says that she does not want something, but unconsciously, yes, she wants it, and that wins her. And not so unconsciously, but rather she is constantly contradicting herself. So even if she has the freedom to do whatever she wants, she suffers and remains a slave to what she wants. As Nietzsche has already explained, I have wondered when he wrote something similar to what I said above towards the second half of the 19th century, if he really knew the depth of his words. But here, as far as we are concerned, people are in control and not, because they are slaves of themselves. Everything is scalar, but in a big way. So this means that the good also has an equal chance of coming out. But since what happens is the reflection of the human mind, and very definitely the mentality that produced the problem has not been changed, so the result is not so positive. Because what generates the problem is still there. You can't expect anything other than the evil that created the problem to run its course. An alcoholic cannot be expected to cure his cirrhosis of the liver if he continues to drink. And that is precisely what is going on here. And what do you think people or us should do more of so that the good can succeed? Take power. Have the courage to take responsibility for your own actions and do what each one thinks is best. They will say that there are many awake people, but next to the collective, they are a minority and it sees them as the problem, not the solution. And besides being few in numbers, they are very divided and they spend their time attacking one another because they are right and not the others, because they only see their own interests. Good example, but also alcoholism is a type of disease, addiction, caused by many internal traumas, and many times they need help, someone to support them in the fight to get out of alcoholism. Many alcoholics ask for help, but they don't help themselves. Same here. And many of them don't ask for help either. They are in denial. The Federation would arrive and put them in rehab and everything is fine. Six months later they return to the same. So do humans. The problem with alcoholics is that the traumas are so deep and the power of alcohol so strong that no matter how much they suffer, they don't know how to get out. Others don't want to. They submerge themselves in their traumas even more. They have no faith in themselves, no new visions. Same here. Comments Robert You can get out with willpower, but you need a motivation, and they don't have it. Yes, the Federation as external aid only, this would never work. They have to realize their problems and draw strength. And how do we motivate them? Comments Robert I think they will react at the last minute, as always. They are not aware of what is coming. We can't, Gosha. That depends on each one. There is no motivation that works for everyone. They will only react when everything falls on top of them, and they will not know how to do anything, because most likely it will be too late to do anything. 
This, what I already shared, is too simple, but it should be a sphere. Everything that happens anywhere affects everything else. Nothing is isolated. The concept of isolated events is only a mental construction, an idea. People perceive time as a line, a single line. What I am trying to describe is what you see above. It collapses the mind. No, it doesn't collapse it. Please continue, comments Robert. Yes, explain more. You still haven't understood. Not even I can understand that. Okay, but keep going. I feel it is important. So, what we generate with our consciousness at one point affects other points on the sphere. Our thinking is scalar. Yes, in short, it is not necessary to understand this. Just understand that what you think is much more powerful and important than what you do, the latter only being the result of the first, without stopping doing things. Comments Robert. Exactly. You have to live from the mind, not from the body. Just that your body is your mind too. So, if that missile in Beirut that they just fired was the consequence of thinking before, then it would have the scalar effect, no? There are levels of the word to think. I would say that those who sent the missiles were reacting, not thinking. Asks Robert. You mean that the thought of launching a missile does more damage than the missile itself? In a scalar way, yes, but it depends on who thinks it. If a broken shoes thinks it, it is different from an admiral of the US Navy, and with other things in reverse. And how to distinguish which action is of scalar thinking and which is of pure reaction? I mean, every action has its origin in the mental plane, even if they are reactions, right? Thinking as a deep, dedicated reasoning, logical with purpose. Reacting is doing something in response to a conditioned stimulus. I understand. I would like to learn more about how to think in the elevated way so that I can influence many points in the sphere at once. You already do. And the famous topic that gets tiring, the shadow work that few, if not nobody does, because it is annoying. Raising your consciousness, your understanding, makes your thinking produce progressively higher and higher scalar effects and strong. Therefore, working on themselves, on improving themselves as people, results in their thoughts and actions coming from those thoughts becoming stronger and stronger. The higher understanding and perception of densities a consciousness is, the more influence it will have with its thoughts and actions on the whole, in an exponential way. It also implies that you acquire progressively more responsibility for what is happening. In this graphic map, you can see the average of the reality frequency, density and dimension. It is the average elevation area. The peaks are, or would be, the awakened people. The valleys are the regressives. Everything has existential frequency of a plane, like 3D average. The more there are awakened ones, the more it rises, the more regressive ones it goes down. The sleeping ones represent an average stagnant adrift. No effect on the whole, they don't pull up or down, they are just asleep. But a person who rises in density, he understands that he is not a single consciousness but a collective of consciousnesses 
And this is the way it is in all places or stages of consciousness development. You are never one person, but a collective. Who is called you? Who observes is the result of all the consciousnesses that form you. The higher you are on the scale of perception of consciousness, the higher you are as in your existential density dimension, you will be more and more the result of a collective of consciousnesses, the ones that form you. That is to say that although you have a sense of a localized I, you are really formed by other people who, described in another way, are also you. So a person or a consciousness living on a higher density dimensional existential plane would be a collective or it will have the same influence as a collective of individuals in a lower density. What a shame that I am part of the collective of ignorant consciousnesses here on Earth. I hope they don't get stick to me too much as part of who I am. No, because what shapes you is what is in accordance to you. What shapes you is what you are compatible with. But that does not mean that you are compatible with only the good. So, I am only part of the collective with those who are in accordance with me, yes? Yes. This means that a being of high densities, whatever he thinks and does, has a greater influence on a collective of lower densities. This is just how things work. Because whatever that high-density person thinks is, by definition, what an entire collective thinks. But every person on earth walking there, seeing themselves as just one person, as one more body, will not have the same level or the same influence as others. That is, it only looks the same, but it is not the same. That is why people, the broken shoes, who have high perception, who are awake and positive, by this rule, with their thoughts and their mere presence, they will have exponentially more influence on the nature of reality than a legion of the sleeping ones. For this reason, a density and how it works is not a democracy where the votes are counted and that's it, no matter what or who the people are. That is why I am telling you that broken shoes are the key. If there are 1,000 people on earth, you don't need to reach a critical mass change point of 501 awakened people. We only need 5 angels who have more influence than 995 sleeping ones. Or in turn, we only need 50 thinking individuals for them to have more weight than 950 sleeping ones. So with this, what I'm telling you with very crude numbers to explain something extremely complex, each broken shoes that know themselves awake and spiritually advanced have and carry an enormous responsibility on how they influence the collective. The more awake you are, the higher densities you are able to perceive and understand, the greater the responsibility on your shoulders. I repeat, it is not a democracy. Reality does not work that way. In other words, the more awake and more conscious a person is, the more influence they will have on what they will manifest in the collective reality. See, 
Now I understand why I always had the feeling of strange responsibility to never get too sad or show sadness to people in general. I never understood why. I felt that my role is to maintain the frequency, that I bear this responsibility to maintain the fort. Now I understand it more. That's right. So one awake person is worth 1,000 asleep or more. It depends on the awake. That is why broken shoes has control and not the governments that are the result of what the average sleeping collective manifests. And the negative or regressive is only the embodied fears of everyone, including the sleeping ones. This means that an awakened person with fear of something who is manifesting negative things by being in a negative thinking spiral, by entertaining negative thoughts, will have the ability to manifest those negative things much faster than the average sleeper. This is very dangerous and people should know it. Thank you. This is very inspiring. But then... Why don't we still have enough power over the inhabitants of this planet yet? Are we not enough in numbers? Should we call in more angels? Or raise the power of those that are already there? Asks Robert. So an awakened person with negative thoughts is dangerous. Is that normal? For the awakened person to project negative things? It is normal or unavoidable, but you must understand that these thoughts influence the collective much more than those of a sleeping person. It is not the same. So an awakened person of high density perception, it is very dangerous that such a person enters negative spirals because they manifest everything very quickly precisely because they are of high densities and the higher a density, the faster everything manifests. It must also be seen that there is no positive and negative, good or bad, but it is a relative aspect. So it is the person who gives those qualities to what happens or what they are seeing. So just because a person is of high densities, does not mean that they will always or only manifest positive things, seen as positive from the point of view of the 3D Earth. What you think and what you focus on you will have, so you can manifest whatever it is for yourself or for the collective. That is why it is so important that you take responsibility for what you think and what you perceive and what you do, because, yes, you affect everything very strongly. I always had the strange hold the fort feeling of responsibility, but referring to frequency, emotions, moods, and thoughts, this is the mission of many starseeds, maintaining who they are, maintaining the frequency. In fact, in my Facebook, in the section of your work, I have frequency maintainer or something like that. And I never let myself be sad much with other people. I cannot. I was not hired for that. Exactly. On the other hand, it's okay to let yourself feel sad and whatever. But I never do it openly. I do it like the lone wolf. And I try to get out of the state fast. Comments Robert. But sadness is an emotion. Yes, that's why. You have to feel it if it comes. And a frequency. There is nothing wrong with being sad. If you fight against that, you will only have more of the same. But understand and let that feeling flow. A clarification. When a general or an admiral is more important than broken shoes, when he thinks of sending missiles. It is only because he is a general or an admiral, and therefore it has the power to generate the actual action that will cause an explosion. 
but only because he is physically in a position to do it, of course, not because he has more power of manifestation than broken shoes. The topic of who manifests more than whom depends on many factors and is something very complex. But generally, a general or an admiral are sleeping people and very matrix. But if he were an awakened starseed general and they exist, his power is quite considerable. But who manifests more than who is a complex dynamic that deserves a separate long topic because it is important and complex at the same time. In itself, it is just that the awakened person, who most obviously sees and understands information and has perception and awareness or of many planes, as I have explained, that is formed with the sum of his own consciousnesses, then that person becomes scalar, as he is the sum of several persons, its power of manifestation is as if it were a group. That is to say, what happens in the mind of a single broken shoes can have the same manifestation power of a block, community or entire city, or of an entire galaxy or more. This is something that I have been able to study in detail. How the capacity is increased by the sum of consciousnesses. And this happens, for example, with strong or complete absolute empathy, where a person understands and becomes another and another. And in itself, he goes on as if acquiring other alter egos that he incorporates as extra personalities, multiple personalities, without the burden of psychological meaning here, where in both perception and energy, he becomes that person that he understands. I try to give with words an explanation of concepts outside the understanding and for which there is no language. But in short, an awake person with scalar consciousness weighs more to manifest things than the equivalent in number of other people who are not so awake, acquiring with this exponentially also more responsibility for their acts and action, ergo for what they think.